Hello and welcome to Inside Modular, the podcast of commercial modular construction brought to you by the Modular Building Institute. With a compact footprint, variety of unit options, and seamless system management, city multi-variable refrigerant flow zoning systems from Mitsubishi Electric Train HVAC US are a one-stop solution for modular projects. With efficient operation and the ability to connect to commercial ventilation equipment, third-party systems, and comprehensive control solutions, City Multi VRF can help you meet energy and performance goals on your next project. From off-site development to on-site assembly, you can trust our manufacturer-level support to guide you from system selection to design to startup, no matter the application. To learn more about our offerings, visit MitsubishiPro.com. Welcome everyone, my name is John McMullen and I'm the Marketing Director here at MBI. Today I'm talking with Rene Bernard, Owner and Chief Operating Officer at Corner Cast Construction. Rene is going to talk about the ins and outs of container-based buildings and their potential for industrial use. Rene, welcome. John, thank you for having me. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, so uh, tell me about yourself, Rene. How did you get your start in the industry and, and what led to you going into modular and off-site construction? Well, the first time I was introduced to the concept of uh, off-site construction must have been at the, at the university. Um, I believe it was an assignment for a, a multi-story parking garage with uh, prefab concrete elements. Um, then uh, when it was time to do my internship, I found the possibility to go to uh, Italy and, and work at the hot headquarters of one of the world's largest prefab facade designer and manufacturer. Um, to be honest, my main motivation was to go to live in Italy. <laughs> the, combination of, uh, the combination of the off-site manufacturing and uh, the on-site uh, installation really, really grabbed me. Awesome. And, and we've had an earlier conversation. You said you went to school in, in Holland, is that right? Yes, correct. I've, I've got a, I did my master's degrees in Holland. So you've been all over. I've been traveling around, yeah. Well, that's good. That's awesome. <laughs> um, when did you first become aware of the possibility of using shipping containers to create buildings? Were, were you excited about that at the start, or did you kind of have to warm up to that idea? Um, well, my, the first introduction must have been 10 years later, after my internship there. I, I, I had moved to Canada after finishing my master's in Holland, and... Um, after working as a production engineer in the, for the same uh, Italian company in, in Montreal, I was actually looking for a, a, a new challenge. And uh, when a friend of mine who, who uh, works in logistics, he told me he was looking for an apartment and he had visited a new building that was uh, built out of containers. But while he was inside, although he has been working in logistics all his life, he couldn't, says, he couldn't tell he wasn't with it was in containers. Huh. So that, that was interesting. But uh, um, but then he also told me that, that that company that built them was actually looking for uh, to hire people. And that actually interested me even more. So uh, long story short, I was hired as a project manager there. And I was put in charge of a 63 container workers accommodation. Wow. Built in in northern Nunavut. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lucky break. Um, that was nice. So container buildings have been gaining a, a lot of momentum over the past several years, and, and I've seen a variety of really creative homes and retail spaces. We get a lot of them in our awards of distinction, entries every year. Based on, on your experience at CornerCast, why, why do you think containers have become so popular in the industrial building sector? Uh, very good question. Uh, yes. Um, yeah, so yeah, you're saying that uh, residential and retail is, uh, is very popular. It, it's it's obviously more visible than the industrial sector, mm -hmm. uh, but we mainly serve the industrial sector, and yes, we, we are noticing a, 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 an increase, um, and I think it's mainly due to the fact that containers are more and more accepted as a way of building, so... Just like my friend who didn't realize he was in a shipping container, we, we still get often the same reactions today. So when, when, when a client has that reaction, they, they are hooked. And you bring up a good point. Um, I brought up 
uh, residential and retail spaces, which are often sort of the the, you know, the cover stories for uh, container buildings. But but you guys, Cornercast specializes more in, on industrial buildings. So when you say industrial, just so everyone listening is clear, what does that mean? Uh, a, a, an industrial building made out of containers. Um. So one of our main product is um, our, our maintenance garages where we use um, where we use the shipping containers as a base for a lightweight structure so uh, we use the shipping containers as offices locker rooms uh, compressor rooms loop rooms everything is prefab pre-built within the containers then we place them and we build a structure between the containers creating a large open space uh, for yeah, truck maintenance or... Okay, got it. Um, so I was wondering if you could speak to the, the quality control aspect of building with containers, because I, I don't know much about this. Uh, how are they inspected initially you, when, when Cornercast first takes possession of them? How do you inspect them and, and what criteria are there for using them in industrial projects? Um, I, I, I guess the simple question is, are, are all containers built the same? Can you use them in the same ways? Uh, largely, yes. So, so are they built the same? Um, shipping containers are all built using the same uh, standards, so ISO okay. guidelines that dictate strength, uh, building material, paint spec, etc. Uh, but there are there are slight differences between different made. So the, the containers are made in different factories and different factories do have slight differences such as uh, the shape of the bottom rail changes, mm -hmm. which seems insignificant, but for us within our design, we need to know that. Okay. Um, so uh, when a container comes in, there's three or four items that we check right away because we know that they have an influence on our design. Got it. Other differences are between different type of containers. So you have 20 foot containers, you have 40 foot containers. Then, for example, and they have particular features. So, for example, a 40 foot high cube has a, has a gooseneck, which is a, a, a different structure within the floor. Uh, 53, contain 53 feet containers are actually 8 foot 6 wide, where the actual, the rest is 8 foot wide. So there's there's differences there. So with all these different uh, shapes and sizes and, and ways of construction, are, are there challenges that you've encountered uh, when starting out on an industrial container building? Are, are there specific design or construction requirements that are trickier than others? Um, that's a very interesting question. Uh, I think, well, let's go back to the start. When we started Cornercast, we were very much focused on existing prefab marketing market sectors, um, but we had a very hard time competing with uh, existing solutions. So we started more to focus on the type of project where functionality is more important than aesthetics. Well, there is something to say for containers, for, yes, using containers. Um, but we were facing the fact that. Most of these type of buildings were not considered to be built as prefab, let alone with containers. Huh. So for a long time, we found ourselves redesigning complete complexes and structures uh, to be able to use shipping containers. And um, this often involved a, a good understanding and rearranging complete processes because we would change layouts. So oh, we were really introducing a new way of building in this sector, and it was it was hard to to break that mold. Until we did a, several successful projects, where um, today we see our concept being used as a solution, and we are often even asked to help design, uh, sometimes as early as in a feasibility. So that's 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 where that's the difference. I think it's a more more generally accepted concept now. Uh, another question that, that uh, I don't know the answer to and I'm curious about, are, are there jurisdictional or, or code restrictions that you've had to navigate when building with containers, uh, given that they are these prefab elements that you're bringing in from 
from other sources? Uh, well, I think everybody has to know. Well, <laughs> I mean, every general contractor needs to respect local building codes, uh, whether you're building a shipping container or in wood. But I understand your question, though. So, so interpreting building codes while using shipping containers does get a little trickier, uh, mainly because these guidelines are built or are made around wood structures, not, mm -hmm. not necessarily steel containers. So uh, yes, that, that, that does take some, that does take some creativity sometimes. Um, but uh, we were never stopped using shipping containers due to uh, code restrictions or anything. Um, what's the, what's the biggest advantage to building with containers? Yeah, that's a, that's a question I get a lot. Uh, and I, and I don't think there's one particular advantage. Um, I think it's. I think that there are several aspects that, uh, that 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 all have influence on the choice of, of using shipping containers for a project. Uh, transportability is one. Uh, availability for, for the speed of production, uh, structural integrity, etc. Those are. I, I think where it comes down to it is is to use these aspects uh, in to your advantage as much as possible when you're designing or, or executing your project. Got it. Have you guys been affected by supply chain challenges at all with getting containers? Has that become more of an issue or is that not a factor? Um, so far, uh, container supply is, hasn't been the bottleneck. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it are other elements such as uh, fans and you know, air exchanges. Got it. That there's other elements that we put that we use that, that have been well, that you're putting into the containers that you yeah exactly gotcha okay uh, electrical components are, are hard to get yeah what uh, what advice would you give to designers or builders who are tackling their first container project I think there's there's two major items um, first you need a good design it sounds sounds not straightforward but um, you need a good design that deals with certain elements of the container, such as uh, weatherproofing and, and thermal bridging. Then once once you've got a good design, use a general contractor that knows containers. Mm -hmm. uh, don't just go into a container yard and ask them to cut some containers open or or, or you use a general contractor that never worked with containers before. That's, I think that's I think that's key for success of your projects. Are there is there a, a particular uh, element of containers that you know, requires that uh, a detailed knowledge you were mentioning before about the different shapes of beams and the floors and, and things like that. Are there uh, very you know, sp specific things that people will need to watch out for when using a container uh, for the first time? Well, th those small details only become important when you uh, build on a larger scale. I see. Okay. Uh, you, you can it's not that difficult to navigate to to navigate those elements when you're just building a one off gotcha okay D uh, different kind of question for you now what's what's the future of container buildings do you foresee containers primarily being used for industrial use like cornercast does or is it going to do you think it'll go more towards residential or retail or is the sky the limit well, I, I do think there's a limit for the use of containers because they're cool. Okay. <laughs> I mean, once more people start building or using them because they're cool, then they're not cool anymore. Well, so, that makes sense. So this coolness factor will decrease the effect, but, but that's mainly effect on, on residential and retail, I think. But I do believe containers are being widely accepted now, and, and when used for the right project, they are they're here to stay. As an alternative, as an, as an alternative to wood and steel. Okay, so um, tell me about uh, your World of Modular presentation. You're going to be presenting in April. Uh, we'll be in San Antonio. Um, so I was wondering if you could tell me about that presentation and, and specifically what will uh, attendees learn and, and what are you excited to share? Um, yes, I'm very excited about that. And um, so yes, I will be uh, talking the same subjects, <laughs> uh, 
So I'll be sharing my, my experience uh, with the building with shipping containers, designing and building shipping containers. Mm -hmm. um, so the title would be Shipping Containers Go Where Wood and Steel Frames Don't, But Where Do They Go? And the subtitle would be uh, When Are Shipping Containers the Right Solution? So, and, and I've already mentioned the, the, some aspects earlier in this interview mm -hmm. that, that I will be diving into and explaining how how to use container features in your advantage when you're using containers for a construction project. Well, very cool. I think uh, containers are fascinating, so I can't wait. Uh, I appreciate your time today, Renee. I really do. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you in April at World of Modular. So, thank you very much. My name is John McMullen, and this has been another episode of Inside Modular, the podcast of commercial modular construction, until next time.